It's Louisiana Derby weekend down in the bayou. I'll be there. Michael Baychalk, I believe, will be there on Saturday. But for now, we're together, thanks to the magic of the internet, to talk about this all stakes pick five. And Michael, it hasn't admittedly been the most robust meet business wise for the fairgrounds, but I think they're going to make up for it, at least in some ways. 15 race card, some really good stakes as part of this pick five. Yeah, I mean, we got uh, 15 on Saturday, and then closing day Sunday is 15, so you better yeah. uh, <laughs> get tied on because it's a it's a marathon of racing. Bankroll preservation. Uh, yeah, some really good racing on, on, on Saturday, though. Uh, you know, turf racing and stakes racing, looking forward to it. Yeah, and a big uh, shift with the turf racing, which two of the five – uh, stakes in the all stakes pick five hour, including the race that kicks us off the Benson Memorial mile on the 16th on the lawn. And to me, the big mystery of this sequence, so to speak, is this is in some ways it's not a brand new turf course, but the fact that they're moving the rail in a little bit that allows for 10 starters instead of eight. And the inside part of this turf course is going to be new for the meet. They haven't run on it at all, period. So I'm curious how you're going to approach that, how much stock you might put into that first turf race on the card, which I believe is the fourth. Um, you know, if you'll see that as a bellwether at all, or, you know, are you going back to how you remember the turf playing in previous years, or is it just what you see on the paper is what you're going to have to get? Well, I think it's a combination of all those, Ed. I think, um, you know, as you said, they're going to move the rail in about uh, from 34 feet to 28, which is, you know, six feet, which creates another couple lanes probably. But the, the truth is, is that the inside part of the turf course has been the absolute worst place to be on this turf course from uh, the from the beginning of the meet. So, I mean, if you just use some deductive reasoning, I can't imagine mm -hmm that the better part of the turf course will be inside of what was the worst part of the turf course. I mean, I'm going to just, I'll watch the first, you know, turf race of the day and see how it kind of plays out. But I'm looking at these races um, today. Um, I'm going to, you know, assume that the inside part of the turf course is going to stay um, the worst place to be. So, you know, if you start looking at um, the first race, you know, you got your favorite Adventuring, yep. who has speed, who has an out-of-town jockey who may not understand or have certainly doesn't have the experience running over this turf course that, you know, putting this speed horse uh, on the lead on the rail is probably going to be the worst place to be. So um, that's how I'm going to approach this race. So I'm kind of actually looking forward to betting the eighth race, which is the Tom Benson Memorial, because of that factor, because I just don't. I don't think that adventuring as the favorite on paper is going to be the horse is, is the horse to beat at all. Um, you want to be, it's crazy, but you want to be as far away from the rail as you possibly can. You keep watching these races over and over on the turf and these horses are winning from uh, six out, seven out all the way out to the far outside rail. And it's just incredible, but that's where the best part of the turf course is. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're swinging out to the outside rail if, <laughs> if they're not there already. And uh, I, I agree with your point. If if the inside was the better part of the surface, we would have seen a temporary outer rail, maybe if that were the issue. But clearly they wanted to run on the outer half of the, the course. And, uh, you know, it, it's good that we have 10 more horses, the better They're competitive races. But I think your your intuition is correct. And especially in this opening leg with the two to one morning line favorite in what, what I kind of thought was a competitive race anyway. And then you kind of throw in that mystery of drawing the rail. I think there's opportunity right off the rip in the pick five to, to beat the favorite in leg one. I totally agree. And I'm, I'm not going to have the favorite on my pick five ticket at all. Uh, the three horses that I was looking to use were the other three, uh, you know, in the morning line, the six Didia, who is a, you know, who can be a closer, was a closer uh, in August. And I know this trainer is is very good at um, getting horses ready off a layoff. Um, also, like, she can't sing. 
um, who has won over this course a couple of times and also, you know, seems to have the running style. You don't want to be a deep, deep closer, but you want to be able, you know, a mid pack like a presser. And then also New Year's Eve, who's, who could be, you know, just the class of the race, um, has every right to improve here as a first time four year old uh, filly. Um, and she's run against some of the, you know, the top in her division. So if she comes back ready to run, which Walsh usually has them ready to run, she, she looks like she, she just fits the style um, and she has the class, um, but she has to be ready to run. And, you know, she's won a race over this course as well, which is a big plus. Yeah. I'm not sure what it is with, uh, with Walsh, but uh, you know, last year I had Santine who uh, had that Woodford reserve or excuse me, old Forrester win on Derby day and then came back and, and won the million. Uh, and he's had some success on this turf course as well. So However it is he trains turf horses, they seem to do well on funky turf courses. So uh, that that kind of was something that I, I noticed with uh, him having New Year's Eve in here. But I agree with you uh, on the other two as well. I kind of wish New Boss maybe had drawn to the outside because with uh, her speed uh, stretching out from a turf sprint, I thought that could have maybe been interesting. Uh, not that speed's done overly well on this course, although it's a pretty limited sample with just one to two races a day throughout the meet. Uh, but with that inside draw, uh, I, I just see no path for this one to to get out in the open unless she's really hard used. And then that's no path to victory either. So maybe one to, to tab for the stable mail because I think she really has a really tough go of it here. Could darken the form. And one of those where I already know, like, okay, maybe next time is the time to take advantage of it. Uh, that's why I bring that up. But, but I'm with you. I'm I'm six, eight, nine here, and that's it. You know, I I agree with that. And I, I, the 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 fairground turf races this year um, are a uh, gold mine of trip notes because any <laughs> horse that has been on the rail, basically uh, making a little run in the stretch, it just they just seem to be on like a conveyor belt going backwards. And one horse who I was really looking forward to coming and betting back is in this race, Island Hideaway. Although I think she's probably up against it a little bit on speed figures. Although this horse made a huge run last race, but it was down on the rail. And it's just, she made the lead at the top of the stretch and then she got, she just, it just, she just like almost stopped. And you just mm. never see that kind of, you know, uh, performance in a horse where, you know, she's making a huge run and then you think, oh, this horse is going to win. And then it, the horse, you know, just stops completely. But I was really right. looking forward to betting Island Hideaway, but I think she might be a little bit against it. Although, you know, she, she can certainly sneak up and get a, you know, second or third at a huge price here. So that might be a horse I would include, you know, on a really deep ticket, but I'm with you. Six, eight, nine is the way I'm going to go. All right. And uh, we've certainly done a, a lot of foreshadowing to why I like the horse I do in the Muniz. Uh, we'll get to that one after the New Orleans Classic, though. Uh, and and what a draw here. Mile and an eighth on the dirt. And we get uh, the Pegasus World Cup winner. That race has come back to be extremely formful uh, with many next out winners. And I love that our collector's here because uh, he is absolutely going to take money and be the favorite. Uh, and it's one of those situations, Michael, where every data point I like to look at, Ragazin, Prime Power, uh, certainly has a speed advantage, but West Willpower is going to be the second choice. And I think he has a, a huge chance here to just basically get the jump on this field. I agree. I mean, it's hard to, you know, you have to start and finish with art collector since he's, you know, in the inform horse, but, you know, can he run that same race right back here on a different track? Uh, West will power Brad Cox, who, you know, as you, you, you almost have to include most Brad Cox horses in your <laughs> multis because he seems to win just race after race on the big stakes days. And this horse certainly fits. I mean, the second off a layoff, may have been a tad bit short last samurai who beat him last race just came back and won again so he wasn't losing to you know a, a schlub and and then he beat the, the third place horse by seven i agree with you i mean i think this is the horse um that you might get a little bit better price on um 
than two to one. I think art collector is definitely going to take a lot, a lot of money. Um, on the other hand, you know, if you look in contrary, you're going to say, well, these two are speed horses. They may get into a battle and who's going to be the horse that's going to come, you know, and grab them at the end. And for me, I'm going to include rattle and roll, uh, oh, okay. who I was very high on last year. Um, <laughs> and he just didn't turn, he didn't turn his, his, he didn't turn on the light until the summer and he, and he won a few nice races, you know, with really good times as he got better. And then I also note that uh, McPeak brought back Smile Happy, his stablemate last week at uh, Oaklawn, and he ran very well. So I'm hoping that Rattle and Roll, you know, will be the beneficiary of a extreme uh, pace duel and could roll by him in the stretch. But otherwise, I'll, I'll probably be, just be using Art Collector and um, West Will Power with Rattle and Roll in this one. Uh, one thing I will say I like about Rattle and Roll and was looking at Mr. Wireless for a similar reason is they are getting six pounds uh, from the top two. And especially talking about horses who will be, pardon the pun, rolling late, uh, you know, if you get that momentum. Uh, it, it's if you're stopped at all, the extra weight could be a factor with West Will Power be on the lead. So not as big a deal for him. But I, I do think six pounds is not insignificant with this group and, and rattle and roll certainly has some numbers that are competitive. So uh, I'm with you on him and, and Mr. Wireless for me as well, kind of the alternatives to, to West willpower. I do think based on, you know, how we talked about the opening leg where we're clearly against adventuring and going to let them beat us. That does give us at least a little option to use a shorter price here. Maybe uh, since we're starting off against a, a chalk who I definitely think will be two to no higher than two to one. Uh, so that, that's a positive. Uh, and then I'm also going to try to beat the favorite in the Muniz because uh, we, again, have the top choice on the rail. Yeah. And, I, you know, on I just want to say one more thing about this race. I, I think I tipped sure. uh, Power of Medina last time we were we had we did this segment and I was yes. shocked at the price <laughs> at three to one made the favorite. But I think he got a really good setup there. And I also think he'll take a lot more money here, too, which, you know, I, it's possible our West Will Power may end up at five to two or three to one here just because uh, Pioneer Medina took a, a lot of money in his last race. Yeah, no. Uh, well, th three to one would be great. And I mean, I, I, I don't see how our collector is not even money. I agree. Totally. So. I mean, the, unless none of the others take any money, yeah, there's there's got to be an opportunity on West Willpower, hopefully, and rattle and roll could be, what is he on the morning line? Uh, He's 10 to 1, yeah, he'll be every bit of that. Yeah. Back to the turf uh, for the middle leg. Uh, it's the Muniz presented by Horse Racing Nation, and a great job by the uh, racing department here to get both World Cup winners. Uh, they got the, the turf. Uh, here in Atone, we'll have just seen our collector. And uh, Atone, I understand why he's a favorite, totally get it. But five to two on the rail, uh, I have to let him beat me. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, he he ran a huge race, uh, kind of a little, you know, he's he, he doesn't know whether he's a speed horse or whether he's a, you know, <laughs> a presser or sometimes he's even a closer. So he's kind of got a, a split personality there, but he ran – probably his best race of his career. Uh, he does pick up one pound, which is, again, I don't think that's insignificant, um, but it is significant that he's on the rail. Um, so if he's going to be a saving type of horse pressing, he's going to be saving from the rail, and it's just not going to be the place to be um, at all. And so I'm going to have to let this one, as you say, I, I'm just going to have to let this one beat me, and I'm not going to include in my pick fives, um, hopefully finding some values in other places. Well, a uh, horse who was on the rail last time, and the, the if you look at the running line, you wouldn't think he made any sort of move, but I actually thought on the far turn that Tis the Bomb was making a potentially winning move. I mean, two mammies maybe would have spurted away from him, uh, but he, he completely flattened out, and, and then, you know, turning for home was, was clearly not going to be in contention, but uh, he was on the rail. It was a layoff. Now we move to the outside. Brian sticks aboard, which is no big surprise for Kenny McPeak. But the trainer does add Lasix, and he gets to stick with the 118. I know my reputation precedes me, Michael. I picked this, <laughs> pick this horse a bunch. 
but I have to go back to the well again. There's just too many excuses last time for a horse I believe in. I totally, totally agree. I think the addition of Lasix is important here. Uh, and then again, uh, as part of, you know, dipping into the well of trips uh, on the turf, this one certainly you dip your hand and you come out with this one because he was definitely on the rail. Um, for, he, he started on the rail. He, he, he was tracking inside. And then that's just, you know, he just tired. And so he had an excuse because he had been off for a while. Um, but he also had a bigger excuse because he was on the rail. This race might be the one, you know, the one that they were trying to win anyway. I mean, it's hard to win a mile and an eighth off a layoff. Um, he has some races back as a, you know, when he was a two-year-old on the turf, they were, they were just huge. And he hasn't quite gotten back to that level, but he does have a lot of excuses. Um, so he's going to be, you know, a bomb. Uh, I know you'll be rooting for him, but he absolutely will be on my, my tickets for sure. Another one on mine, despite the inside draw, which, you know, we, we've mentioned we don't love, but I see 20 to one on the morning line. And I kind of foreshadowed this as well. I see Brendan Walsh training and, uh, you know, this horse has a win over the course. I, I think Brendan, for whatever reason, has a handle on what it takes to win these races on the, these funky, you know, undergrown turf courses. Rising Empire, for me, uh, looking at uh, looking at Ragazin, did move uh, backward, actually, despite the better performance last time. But I like that this one had a win at nine furlongs, and I especially like 20 to one. Yeah, and he, I'll say, you know, he's gotten the – the, the good trips. I mean, he's gotten the outside trips in his last two. Um, he's certainly stepping up, no question. Yeah. Uh, he's getting a little bit of weight. Um, but, I mean, at 20 to 1, he's he's certainly usable. He wouldn't be somebody I don't think that I'm going to use just because I think he's gotten the benefit of those, um, you know, the perfect fairgrounds outside sure. trips. The other ones, the, the other two are – well, I mean, we got to talk about two Emmys who yeah, – Of course. Despite <laughs> all of our talk about um, – the turf not favoring speed has, you know, ran just probably the best race of the year on the turf in the fairgrounds uh, handicap last time out winning by four went right to the front where you don't want to be was, you know, a little bit wide. So James Graham, you know, knows not to put the horse down on the rail in the back stretch. This horse was probably three, three to four wide. Um, Got an easy lead, however, and then just, you know, exploded in the stretch. Won this race last year. Um, so, you know, coming back to defend the title. Does pick up some weight, which, you know, can be a concern for this horse. Um, but a legitimate favorite, probably. I mean, he won't be the favorite, I would, I guess. But, I mean. I wouldn't think. It it it's, you know, two Emmys is just a tough, tough horse. I mean, he's going after a million dollar uh, uh, career earnings. And I, I really love horses like this. They just always seem to run their race and very game. But the two that are bookending this one in the stall are the two that I'm going to use the five spooky channel um, who loses Graham here for Joel Rosario. Um, but has, you know, won a race over this course. And also another mystery, Chris Block seems to win races at the fairgrounds on the turf quite a bit. He's having a great meet. Um, the horse likes a little bit of give in the ground, and we're supposed to get some rain on Friday night. So that would move this one's chances up quite a bit if we got a lot of rain. Um, this would be my top choice if the turf course comes up, you know, probably in a good a good fashion. Um, but another mystery would be one that I'm using for sure in the pick five. Yeah. That, uh, Connolly, which, uh, the two you mentioned come out of, uh, is also Rand's just, just beating a length and less than a length, uh, number came back pretty quick. So, uh, and that was on soft ground. Uh, so in interesting to note there that I think, you know, we're all going to be dazzled by the, the G1 next to a tone's name and, you know, Gulfstream shippers. And they have done well in this race, Colonel Liam and bricks and mortar uh, just in the last four years. But uh, that, that Connolly, I think is better than the weekend warrior handicap capper might give him credit for. And no one knew it happened because Sam Houston isn't simulcasting. <laughs> so, I mean, really, when you look at that, you're like, Oh yeah, the Connolly. So uh, there, I think yeah. there is some opportunity there price-wise because Atone 
and two Emmys are absolutely going to be the top two choices. And, and after that, yeah. um, you know, I made a cake for a big, big price, but I'm excited about Tis the Bomb. The only short price we really didn't mention was General Soul, uh, who I think will be higher than his five to one morning line. Uh, the win streak uh, at the, I guess that was, well, there's a layoff in there. Was stringing some wins together, but just number wise, Michael, this this horse does not stack up to any of the other ones we've talked about. He do, he doesn't, and, I, and again, I'll mention that you know he's gotten, uh, except for his race right after the Christmas, where he was on the inside and he ran his worst race on the turf. He's been on the far far outside uh, in his races, so you know now he's got a little bit of an inside post position. He might have a horse going, you know, uh, going to the front inside of him. So he's going to be kind of stuck in down there. And I just, this is one I, you know, I would at five to one, I would be betting against or laying for sure uh, because he just got the benefit of some trips. And he's probably, he probably needs to get a little bit faster today, which, you know, it's hard to do as a, um, as a six year old. Right. So this is not one that I'm going to have on my tickets. Me neither. Uh, and definitely uh, in this day, but I, we like talking about the pick five, love the bet, but especially in these, you know, 10, in the case of Louisiana Derby, 12 horse fields, uh, tossing a horse like general soul completely. Uh, if you have a try opinion uh, is also opportunity. So I'm definitely going to be looking at uh, the vertical pools in a race like that, knowing I don't love uh, a general soul at all. And then a tone I'm willing to beat out of the top spot. Uh, from a field of 10 to a field of five, the Fairgrounds Oaks, uh, which uh, lost a, a little zip on its fastball when Hoosier Philly threw in a clunker in the Rachel Alexandra. She was two to five that day and never looked like a winner. It was a tough watch if you were a backer of hers, which I actually did try to, to get cute in the race, but uh, couldn't find pretty mischievous, unfortunately. Uh, my best bet of the day is in this race, and it's it's none of the uh, three who are short on the morning line. I love South Lawn, and I'm hoping people, uh, whether they forgive Hoosier Philly or believe in Pretty Mischievous and the Alice look, the two winners of the preps for this, I don't care because uh, I'm going elsewhere. Yeah, I looked really hard at uh, South Lawn because her last race was visually impressive. Um, the way she, you know, broke um, kind of behind and then just, you know, rushed up. And you think, you know, we've seen thousands of races, Ed, and we've seen these horses before. They rush up and then they just kind of like quit, you know, and she just kept going. And uh, very, it was very impressive. It was first time Lasix. You know, I, I don't know what to read into that. And that's the only pause that she gives me. Otherwise, she, you know, she wants to go longer, um, but she, you know, she wanted, she's a two turn horse for sure. And again, that race was just very visually impressive. Um, I too was against who's your Philly um, in the Oaks. And I, mean, I, I wasn't to able was to, to land. Unbelievable. It, it was ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, you know, I could have seen six to five or seven right. to five. And, and the truth is, as you, I mean, I, she, she she looked visually impressive in her first three. I'm not sure um, that the numbers, however, came back, you know, as strong as, you know, other horses. Um, and so she, on, from a number power perspective, going into the Rachel Alexandra, she was probably on par with a couple of these. Um, so two to five never made much sense at all. Um, and pretty mischievous came back and, I mean, ran a really a corker of a race. And uh, I mean, I don't know why she, you know, she can't come back and improve again. And, you know, here we are talking about that man, Brendan Walsh, who all of a sudden, you know, has three horses in the three stakes races and he could win three, three of them uh, at least, uh, you know, he could win three. So, I mean, this, this Philly looks pretty strong to me. She's run twice over the track. She's won both times. She's finished well each time. She has um, uh, uh, tractable speed, so she can raid or she could go. And I mean, I think she's going to be extremely tough to beat here. Uh, the horse that she, you know, she has to beat, I think, is the the Cox, the Alice Look, who um, in the Silver Bullet Day really ran well, uh, and then has been laid off, which you know we'll get to. You know, uh, this is the same um, pattern that he, uh, Cox is using with Instant Coffee. Um, I'm not really sure 
whether how to read that. You know, these horses usually kind of run every four, six weeks when they're right. three years old, but this one has been off for, I don't know what to read about that. Maybe he's just managing her and in instant coffee better or, or what he thinks they're, they need to do. But, um, I, you know, you got to answer the que- answer the question of what to do with who's your Philly. Right. And does she bounce back? Yeah. I mean, she's going to run better She'll than run she ran better. Yeah. last time. But is she really, you know, that much head and shoulders above these? I don't really no. think so. So, you know, if you get her, which I think she will be again, I think she'll be a six to five, seven to five horse yeah, here because be there's the just favorite. a lot of high. I was, I was surprised yeah. they made uh, Pretty Mischievous the favorite. I think there's no chance that Hoosier Philly is not the favorite. There's no chance. Right. So, you know. With a five horse field, four of them I think can win. I don't know, maybe even the Asmus and the two, um, you know. But this is a tough race in terms of uh, multis because you know you got to figure out what to do with who's your filly. Yeah. Um, and I I really don't know what I'm doing yet with her. I know I'm including pretty mischievous in, in the Alice. Look, I'm not sure about your horse South Lawn yet, just right. on the Lasix question. I, I can tell you, but my, if I'm looking my for main ticket is a South Lawn single. Yeah. That, okay. That's well, that may opinion. push if me I'm over. Right, I need to give myself a shot. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. And, and, and then you wouldn't, um, and then you wouldn't use who's your Philly, which, you know, you're trying to go against the crowd and, and maximize your, your, your value. And, and I, I wouldn't have any, issue with that at all um because you know she hasn't really proven yet that she can that she's fast as these other ones right well that brings us uh to the big one louisiana derby was a million bucks yep million smackaroos and uh it seems michael there, there's every race we've talked about there's some question uh the you know the turf dynamic with the the rail moving in and our collector showing up uh in the uh the older male race and for me in the louisiana derby it is an incredible to draw 12 horses an incredible lack of pure speed um you know usually we're still at the stage of the derby preps where we're seeing oh can this horse keep stretching out and maybe he's a sprinter maybe not but I mean, all of these horses, which in a way is somewhat good from a Kentucky Derby perspective, they're all classic types, but, uh, you know, none of them really seem to have much speed. I think that's where I started the race and I'm going to end the race <laughs> uh, analysis is that there there was just nobody. And, and speed is dangerous, you know, at the fairgrounds. Even I, I know we're going a mile and three sixteenths, but on the dirt, uh, speed has been very good all year long. Um, even in the distance races. So, you know, if, if a horse can get a clear lead, um, then that horse in this race is going to be dangerous. And I, I do think there is a horse that's going to get a clear lead. And so, therefore, I think this horse is going to be dangerous. And I know we're probably going to land on the same one here, mm-hmm. Ed, but I think Jace's road is going to the front because he's on the outside. So he has to, he has to push a little bit early. And I think Florent Giroux is just going to, take this horse to the front and they're going to play catch me if you can. And I mean, you go back to the gun runner where they did the same thing. And this horse ran a huge figure for December for a December two year old and then didn't run so well in the slop at Oak Lawn. So, I'm, you know, you can throw, you, I'm willing to just throw that race out completely. And if, you, if I'm basing it off the 96, I'm looking at the brist net number, which was better than uh, the debut number, better than the Iroquois. That was a really positive pattern. This horse could run, you know, a top here, and a top is going to win this race. And at 12 to 1, give me the speed horse on the lead against a bunch of horses that are going to chase, and I'll go to the, you know, I'll go to the bank more times than I'll, than I'll be tearing up tickets. Right, yeah, and certainly no issue uh, with the a quality road uh, product to get the distance and – Florent Giroux uh, has been aboard three times. One of them was a win, and it was gate to wire. So certainly a a style that seemed to fit his way. Uh, I do like the Cox Barn in here. Uh, It is not instant coffee. So you and I are are both in the barn of the favorite, but willing to go against. uh, We'll see if we actually get 10 to 1. I'm dubious uh, just because this horse has been 9 to 5 and even money before and was uh, 
nearly six to one against 14 others in the Risen Star. Uh, Tappet's conquest was just given no chance uh, to win that race last time. And Florent Epscons for your top pick. Uh, Manny Franco, uh, not sure if this was some sort of surprise to his agent or what, but has no other mount at fairgrounds on Saturday. Uh, so he's here to make this one count. And I think he can. I, I think this is a horse with a lot of talent. And uh, that allowance race where he was uh, short of neck to determinedly, I, I thought was a, a really solid run to the point that when he was nearly six to one in the Risen Star, uh, I was on board and he was just way too far back. Excuses are starting to mount. So this probably is the end of the road for me if he can't get it done. But at 10 to 1 or even 8 to 1, I think Tappet's Conquest is the play. Now, we won't know if we get that in the pick five, obviously. So he is going to be on my tickets regardless. Uh, and then the other key race for me is that allowance that was on Risen Star Day. Similar question, though, is Southlawn, Michael. Uh, both horses were on Lasix for that allowance, which uh, is definitely by far the fastest uh, number sheets wise uh, of all the races on the page and horses coming out of. So that intrigues me, both Cagliostro and Dennington. Uh, but at the prices they're going to be, I'll answer the Lasix question and we'll find out. But those are my three A's, uh, six, nine, and 10. Yeah, I can't Excuse argue me, seven, with that. I mean, seven, nine, and 10. I, I want to know what you make of the, of the, you know, I guess Florent Giroux had his choice of Tappet's Conquest or Jace's Road, and he went to Jace's Road. Um, he is the barn, you know, uh, lead rider. Uh, now he's chosen, he's chosen wrong on a couple of occasions with first-time starters this year uh, with Cox, but um, I, I, I seem to think that that it, it makes it. It definitely influences my decision on Jace's road that he's going to choose that one. So the other question, I, you know, on the other Cox, um, instant coffee, the other other Cox, the favorite the other, instant um, coffee, who I thought might be a little short into the Lecompte, and he was certainly not. He got a pretty good pace set up there. Um, and then, you know, the normal progression would have been to run him in the, um, the Risen Star, but he took that race off and maybe he just thought the horse needed – more time or that race knocked him out quite a bit. I don't know. So that, that's a question mark, but yeah. he's the one to beat. There's no question. I mean, for me, he, he, he's, you know, he's legitimately one of the top to me, five Derby contenders, um, Kentucky Derby contenders. And if he wins this, I mean, he, he, you know, he and Fort Forte or whatever would be, you know, one of two, two of the top ones. And so oh, he's, he's legitimate. Yeah. yeah. And there, so, it, it, I don't know what Brad Cox was thinking, you know, so I don't know whether he just needed time off or there might have been a little bit of an issue, but at, you know, a short price and um, he's not one I'm going to bet to win, but I, I'm definitely not going to exclude him and in the my multis. And I may just go straight Brad Cox because, you know, he again, he just shows up and wins these these darn stakes races on the big days more often than not. Yeah, Brad never copped to an issue, uh, but, you know, I was there at Risen Star, and I remember that you know, that week asking Brad, like, hey, you know, hate, hate to bring this up. You have other horses running this weekend in the Risen Star, but, you know, what's going on with Instant Coffee? He hasn't worked since uh, the Lecomte, which at that point would have been 28 days, so four weeks without a work. Uh, and Brad said, oh, he's working tomorrow, and he did. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing whatever the issue was, was minor, but I, I definitely don't see it as a, a positive in that moment that he needed four weeks. So, uh, it, it two to one, I think there's enough there where you say, yeah, you know, maybe he needs one and you don't give up on him for the Derby. You want to see, you don't want to see a Hoosier Philly type run where he's just completely never in it, but even to me, a, a good run where he makes a move and he, he shows some gamesmanship, and even if it comes up short, that to me is is positive enough where he becomes interesting for the Kentucky Derby. Uh, but a two to one here against uh, eleven others, especially since you and I both like different stable mates, uh, I think this is an opportunity, uh, another favorite that I'm not going to have on my my main ticket. Yeah, I, I'll probably have him on there just because I'm high on him. I do. I, I want to. I'm trying to rack my memory. Mandaloon, I think, came into this race as a favorite and then did not run well. Um, 
but then ran extremely well, of course, in the Derby. So maybe yeah. he was foul. He's just, you know, I don't. It's been a funny I don't know this horse. We had Saren Gatti in 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bunker and then won the Oaks. That's right. Uh, yeah. In my mind with Hoosier Philly. Uh, yeah, th these are races you don't necessarily even need to to, to run that because Mandaloon was terrible. That was a right. Mandaloon ran a terrible Louisiana Derby. Right. But then he, so, you know, he 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 had a great month leading up to the Derby. Yes. I think work wise no. and and got beat by the uh, drug horse Medina Spirit. God rest his soul. But he's the winner now, not for the mandolin is the winner. That is, that is <laughs> mandolin cool. is the winner. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So instant coffee. We'll see. Uh, I certainly love the pun opportunities with his name. So it's it's fun to have him in the mix. But uh, otherwise, uh, it's, I, I mean, this, I'll, this is I'll a mention good race. one. Yeah, go on. I want to mention one bomber in here. Uh, uh, you know uh, who who I think you know, can get up into the try and maybe even the exacta. And it's, that's the maiden winner on the bottom uh, baseline beater who I has agree 100%. Uh, just won three incredible, you know, three improving races. And um, his last race was very impressive. Um, but he, his race before that to single ruler, who's in this race was pretty good too. Um, but, you know, this is a horse that's getting better, wants to go longer. Um he could be 30, 30 plus to one. And I think he's certainly a horse that can be included uh, underneath. Um, and depending on, you know, if the race <laughs> falls apart, he's going to be one that's going to be around at the end without question. Yeah. I, uh, this is one of those where from a win standpoint, you know, I, I guess if I'm right in the other four legs, he would he would be on a backup type ticket where I, I definitely don't want to lose if, you know, I'm right about Tis the Bomb and South Lawn for sure, uh, even if maybe that's just a nice pain pick three. Uh, but this is a rare instance where I looked at this race and I was like, OK, baseline beater is definitely a horse. I'm going to build some trifectas around. I just think yeah. uh, that was a, a move forward last out. Now he gets uh, even more distance. And like you said, he's going to be running late. And from and from the 12 hole, Corey doesn't have to get cute early. He just goes to the back, get on the rail, save some ground and then see what you have left for that long stretch. But. Uh, gosh, it, it would be fun to see him crash the try because I, I think that's one of the ways to maybe make money in this race. Yeah, the interesting thing to me about him is, you know, he faced some really soft pace races his last two, yet was able to, you know, close, I mean, in win, which is not a normal uh, performance, right? So, you know, I'm not sure. I mean, he, he might have even some more under the – tank you know if he's faced with a faster earlier pace he might his late pace may even show up in a bigger way i don't know but he definitely has some talent i mean he's a talented horse if he doesn't win to uh saturday um he's going to be around you know uh winning races i think i really like the way he moves and um he's athletic because his last race i uh, watched he had to you know he faced a little bit of adversity and he just he just kept rolling. So I, I like this horse quite a bit underneath might have a little bit to win on him. Who knows? Yeah. He's going to be a huge price. And Neil Pesson, who I think uh, guys like us uh, certainly aware of, but one of those names really until I got involved uh, as, as much as I am was, was not as much aware of, but uh, you know, the, the stats are incredible. 21% uh, huge ROI in graded stakes. He's having a great meet also 22% at fairgrounds this meet. So uh, things going the right way. And uh, yeah, he's, he's in the mix for me uh, underneath. I'm not as bullish maybe on top as you, but I mean, I'm going to watch the board. If it's one of those where he's 60 to one, cause there's 11 others and you know, four or five are taking money. It's definitely worth the flyer. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, it's an extensive tour of the pick five, but I, I think a good one. Uh, I think, you know, gave some good info on uh, just kind of the, the style of, of play that might help you connect the dots. And uh, hopefully one of us will be able to come Saturday. 
Yeah, hopefully we're alive at least to the Louisiana <laughs> Derby. Yeah. Get a little bit of it. Because we're going to need the bullets, Ed, because there's three more races after the Louisiana <laughs> Derby. And, I mean, you know we got to get involved in that pick three or pick four, or, you know. Yeah, so. and then 15 more on Sunday. That's right. So, all right. Well, Michael, really appreciate the time. Looking forward to, to seeing you down seeing you seeing you down there in person. You'll yeah, be there on Saturday. It, Ed. I don't think I'll be there Saturday, but oh, I'll be okay. there book ending on I'll be there Sunday for the for the finale for sure. Okay. And I'm likely going down earlier in the week uh for the other races. All right. Well, Star Guitar Bar will uh will we'll darken the door at some point, I'm sure. Yes, we will. All right. It's the champ, Thank Michael Baychalk. My pleasure. Our pleasure. Hopefully your pleasure. Over 15 races on Saturday at Fairgrounds. Jeff Ruby Stakes Day as well at Turfway Park. There's a pick five connecting those races. It's all happening Saturday. Good luck, everybody.